What do you think are the odds that uh, there is life elsewhere in the universe? Uh, they must be high, and, and mm. I'll tell you why. People say, well, have you found life yet? No. Well, there, you know, that's like going to the ocean. This has been said before, taking a cup of water, scooping up, and saying, there are no whales in the ocean, you know? <laughs> Here's my data, you know? <laughs> you, you need a slightly bigger sample. And so if you look at, for example, what we call the radio bubble, this is the sphere around Earth, centered on Earth, which is the farthest our radio signals have reached in the galaxy. And they're about 70 light years away. We've been transmitting radio signals inadvertently leaking into space for about 70 years. 70 light year radius sphere. Well, how big is the galaxy? Well, shrink that sphere down to maybe the size of a BB, and then the galaxy on that scale would be the size of this stage. That's how far our radio signals have traveled. And those aren't even the ones we sent on purpose. The ones we sent on purpose have traveled much less. So no, we haven't actually um, reached as far into the galaxy as we'd like before we would say definitively that there's no one intelligent living today. But here's some very simple facts. I can review them in 90 seconds. You look at the formation of the Earth and the earliest sign of fossil life. Subtract a few hundred million years at the beginning of Earth when Earth was a shooting gallery. Earth was still accreting the, the, the birth materials of the solar system. It's hostile to complex chemistry over that time. Not fair to start the clock then. Wait a couple hundred million years. Now start the clock and wait around and see when you have the first signs of single-celled life. At most, 400 million years. At most. Earth has been around for four and a half billion so Earth, without any help from us, with basic ingredients found throughout the universe, managed to create life, simple though it was. So, and Earth, one of, you know, eight planets, get over it, uh, <laughs> what, uh, one of, sorry. <laughs> Earth, one, oh, an ordinary star, to suggest, and, and what, what are the ingredients of life? The number one atom in your body is hydrogen. Number two atom is oxygen, together making mostly water that's in you. Next is carbon in this order. Next is nitrogen. Next is other stuff. My favorite element, other, yeah. <laughs> you look in the universe, the number one element in the universe is hydrogen. Next is helium, chemically inert, couldn't do anything with it anyway. Next is carbon. I think I left out oxygen there. Next is oxygen, next is nitrogen, one for one. We're not even made of odd things. The most common things in the universe are found here on Earth and we're made of them. And carbon, one of the most chemically fertile, the most chemically fertile element on the periodic table, it's not a surprise, we're carbon-based. Life is just the extreme expression of complex chemistry. So. That's what life, that's what biology is. So all these people who want to imagine, because imagine, they remembered their chemistry class that, that silicon sits right below carbon on the periodic table. So it bonds similarly to carbon. So they want to imagine silicon-based life. I'm saying, OK, fine, but you don't have to. There's five times as much carbon in the universe as silicon. There's no need to even have to go there. We got enough to imagine just simply with the carbon atom at the center of these, of these huge biological molecules. Point is, it happened relatively quickly with the most common ingredients in the universe. To now say life on Earth is unique in the universe would be inexcusably egocentric. Yeah, I agree with that. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> <laughs> and I would go further and say that if, if ever you meet somebody who wishes to claim that he believes or she believes that life is unique in the universe, then it would follow from that belief that the origin of life on this planet would have to be a quite stupefyingly rare and improbable event. And that would have the rather odd consequence that when chemists try to work out theories, models of the origin of life, they, what they should be looking for 
is a stupendously improbable theory, an implausible theory. If there was a plausible theory of the origin of life... It then wouldn't be it. it th that's right, because, because, it would ha because then life would have to be... Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah.